Please be seated. Before I uh, lead in a word of prayer, first of all, Chuck, great to see you. Thank you. Uh, great to see you, brother. Good to meet you, brother. Yeah. And um, uh, anyway, uh, let me kind of give you uh, an update on a couple of uh, people or situations. So I was speaking with Patricia Fogal yesterday, and so Fred is um, in Good Samaritan. Uh, he's got infections in both legs. Um, and is not doing well. So lift um, Fred up, and then uh, Patricia uh, was hoping to be here today, but she has some heart issues going on, and so she never knows when um, that seems to present itself. Uh, also, uh, we, um, I just want to mention this, but uh, pray for the Casa Boom family. Uh, I know um, I, I've met Bobby a few times. Bobby passed away, and uh, Good friends again, a ways. Uh, Helen went to school with Bobby. Um, so lift up uh, his wife, um, Judy, in prayer. And uh, there's so many, our country, there's so many, many other issues. Uh, you guys, I, you guys, you folks have burdens on your heart as well. I remind you that God knows them all, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and he knows the way out. He knows the way through the wilderness. He knows the way through the Red Sea. You know, all those metaphors to get it, kind of get us out of trouble or the burdens that are upon our hearts. Uh, so um, I, I, have a, I just visited a friend in Delaware, and uh, every morning he would say, the Lord delights in you. Let's go to prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, and I uh, mean gracious. I don't know how... Uh, to magnify um, your grace because it's been uh, so full in abundance to your children. And we come this morning as your children and little children to receive what you would have for us today. And uh, Father, uh, may you give us the grace this morning uh, to take our eyes off this world uh, give us the grace uh, to enter into your peace and your joy. <clears throat> enter into everything that you've secured at Calvary for us. Uh, that we might be able uh, to bring burdens before you, leave them before you, cast them before you, and not have a care in the world. Uh, we know that you love us. Uh, thank you for the reminder that you delight in us. Uh, as, a, uh, as a father or a mother delights in their children, uh, you, you so delight in each and every one of us. And we haven't uh, been uh, everything that we should be or all that we should be or all that we could be in Christ, but we thank you that we're a work that you're going to complete, complete until the end of Christ Jesus. And for whatever we struggle with, uh, you're breaking through that and you're going to uh, finish it off and mold it and shape us, uh, all of us, into the likeness of Christ. And we bless you for that. And we pray that in our times of discouragement, where we fall uh, short, where we stumble, uh, may you constantly bring that to our hearts and our minds. Uh, that we're a finished work and that you're molding and shaping us even now. And, and even though we can't see that finished work, it's finished. Uh, because you've called us, you've justified us, you've sanctified us, and you've glorified us. And it's a, it's, it's a, it's a finished work, it's a done deal. And may we understand that this morning. And as we uh, come to you, May we find great joy and great peace and great strength uh, in the power of the Holy Spirit, especially as we share this time this morning with the saints. Uh, Father, uh, thank you for the privilege to lift up Fred this morning. And we pray you would bless his heart and flood his soul uh, with your presence uh, and that um, you would quiet his heart and that he might uh, look for you and that he might find you and we pray that you would visit him in a way where he would cast his current trial upon you. 
and uh, just be so dependent upon you during this time. Uh, we lift up Sandy Sherman. Um, thank you uh, for Sandy's testimony, uh, for the encouragement of heart that I heard in her yesterday. And we uh, pray that you would just bless her abundantly. Thank you for her family waiting upon her, uh, for her every needs. And um, uh, may that, uh, her testimony resonate uh, throughout her family, an extended family. Uh, Father, thank you for uh, Chuck being able to be out today. Uh, thank you for uh, Edith Perfetti being here. Um, Lord, we also want to lift up Patricia, who was unable to make it today. Um, and we pray that you would bless her heart and give her peace in all things. Uh, also, Father, too, we lift up uh, Judy Kossaboom. Uh, you know the, uh, the grief, the emotional needs, um, uh, everything that goes into losing a spouse and a loved one. Uh, you know it all, Lord, and we pray that you would minister to her heart. Uh, that you would use the Ganaways in a very special way and others uh, in, her, uh, in her circle um, to encourage her and strengthen her during this time. Father, thank you for uh, Leon being here and um, pray that you would give him uh, peace as he shares. Uh, thank you that he's among... Um, brothers and sisters of like mind and like faith. Uh, thank you for calling him to the jail ministry. Um, and uh, thank you for using him in this way. Uh, we uh, look forward, Lord, to uh, him sharing. So um, uh, bless his words and bless his heart uh, to our heart. Uh, may it be your heart uh, to our hearts this morning. And uh, Father, whatever else uh, we're struggling with uh, this morning, we give it to you uh, afresh that Christ uh, might uh, have full place and uh, preeminence in our hearts. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, uh, we have our first reading of Scripture. Bill. <clears throat> Our first reading this morning is from the New Testament, the book of Colossians, the fourth chapter, verses 2 through 6, and it's on page 1144 of the Church Bible. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us, too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I, may claim it, <clears throat> that I may proclaim it clearly, as I should. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversations always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. This is the word of our Lord. This morning, second scripture reading from the Old Testament, from the prophet Isaiah, from the 61st chapter of Isaiah, Isaiah, verses one through three. And if you're using a red church Bible, that'll be found on page 724. Again, the 61st chapter of Isaiah, the first three verses. Isaiah writes that the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord 
for the display of his splendor. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I just want to make sure it was on. Let me give you a little bit of an introduction um, about myself and how I came to be. Unfortunately, I didn't grow up in the state of Massachusetts. I grew up in the state of Pennsylvania. So I'm kind of, they say I'm transparent. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm not one of, you know, but so growing up, I grew up in a good home. Um, religion was, um, it, it wasn't frowned upon, but uh, my mother always took us to church, you know, and um, my grandmother was, was, um, was Christian and, and we would go and, and, and we'd go to church and um, I always knew that I, I needed God but there was outside things that always hindered me, you know. And um, when I was 16, my grandmother believed that she, that if you didn't get baptized, you would be in limbo. Well, that's, I've come to know that that's, that's an old tale. So at 16, I went through and, and, and I got baptized. And so after high school, I went into the military. I spent uh, four years uh, in the Navy, got out, um, and met my wife. Well, my wife's family, uh, she, she wasn't Christian herself. And, and, and we met and we finally, we, we got to a church and we live now in, in Middleborough. And I still felt God's calling. I still felt his calling. And um, just kept doing, you know, we'd go to church on Sunday and, 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 do other, and do other things outside of church. Finally, one day, you know, my wife's like, she's like, you don't seem happy or whatever. You always said that you wanted to be a chaplain. And I'm like, but how are we going to go about doing that? Well, we called Liberty University. Do it. She said, they can do it online. I'm like, Great. Um, so everything started to fall into place. And I said, you know, I started thinking, I said, maybe this is what God wanted me to do. And so started going to school there. We found a church in, in Middleborough. Um, and the church that we were going to, that we had gotten married in, they started, to, they, were, they, were, they were falling off. So we ended up uh, in Middleborough. Started going to... Uh, um, I started going to, with the pastor, meeting with him, and we had a book that was by R.C. Sproul's, and I started asking questions. At that point, that would be in 2013, that I asked Christ to, he asked me, said, would you like to have Christ come in, into your life? And I said, yes, I would. And that's when I dedicated myself to Christ. Well, you know, it's a year later, a few years later, Dan comes and speaks to the, uh, at the church. And uh, tells about his ministry and everything. And uh, I, we started talking. I said, yeah, I'm going to school. I said, I got to do a shadow. I got a shadow. I said, I'd like to shadow you sometime at the jail. So I called him. Uh, like uh, six months later, I called him up. Went. He got me in there. He got shadowing. He said, you know, he said, I'm actually looking for someone. He said, because my assistant is looking to retire. I'm like, well, let me pray over it. Let me, you know, think about it. And... A few months later, he calls me back up and he says, my assistant retired. He said, I'm looking for somebody um, to, to work with me. And I prayed about it and I said, you know what, I, I, I think God's calling me to do it. I really felt that, that he was calling me. And it started opening up. I started doing, um, with the guys, I started doing prayer services. Um, I started doing Bible studies. Um, we do administrative work there. Um, basically, when, when I've learned in the time of, of, of my Christian life is that when, when God brings you to it, he brings you to it, you know, and, and he will, he prepares you for it. So, uh, it's been a, a great, Dan's been a great blessing to me. Uh, he's helped me out along the way. I still have a little over a year, uh, left of my master's. So when I get done, I'll have my, my master's degree. Um, and, you know, I've always, when I go to the jail, uh, right now, unfortunately, with the COVID, we're going three days a week. We're there Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, before, I was there five days a week doing work. And, and right now, they're not allowing us to do um, 
to do services. Um, I don't know why, but I get to do one thing I get to do is I get to counsel them. And I think the one-on-one -on -one interaction, those guys, they, they like that. They, they like having the one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it may be, um, whether it's counseling or it's if, if they had a death in the family, we get notified, we go, we go see them. So, but I have a, there was a gentleman that came to us, okay? And these guys, these guys, most of them, when they come to us, they've lost their house, their home, they, they come broken. Um, and some of them, they, they, they are, you know, they, 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 they are, they're vulnerable when they come. But this, this one gentleman, his name's Rob, and he came to, uh, uh, he came to us and I went in, I visited him. We were talking and, and going, um, just talking about his faith and, and, and where he was at. And he said, do you have any literature that I can, that I can, I can have? I said, sure. So I went, I got him books, I got him literature, went in, we met, you know, a couple days later and I talked to him. He said, you know, I really didn't read him. He said, I just, I threw him out. He's like, it just didn't interest me. And I'm like, okay. Um, but he's like, this one book that I have that's written by a guy that already was, that served jail himself, he, he started, he said, I can't put this book down. And he's like, I got to page 19 there. He said, and the guy said, it said, you know, like having that, that he said, I had that God moment. He said, where, he said, it said it was August 27th. He said at 930, he said, I no sooner went out. I looked at the jail. I looked at the people. He said, I looked at the officers. I said, you know, I realized that nobody can save me except for God. And I don't know if you ever had that God moment, but he said, I went back to my, my cell, got on my knees, and I asked God for, for forgiveness of my sins. And, I, and, and, I, and he's been truly changed. Um, we, we meet. We were meeting once a week. Uh, we have Bible studies that, we, that the guys do. And they get a nice, um, it's nicer than this, but uh, they get a leather Bible with their name on it if they complete all the lessons. There's correspondence courses that these guys take. They get certificates. Uh, for their uh, when they finish them and they can take them with them if, if they sh if they get to leave leave the jail but um, This guy is he's on fire for the Lord and um, I've seen the guys that Dan That Dan has ministered to That to see what God is doing and I always tell people hey, we were just planting the seed We're not you know, God's the one that changes the heart and the nice, I shouldn't say the nice thing, but with getting to do the counseling, getting to do the, the officers, we minister to the officers and the, administ and the administrative people that, that are there. And some of the officers, officers, they feel like that they're doing a good deed because they're, you know, they're serving the public. And, but in their heart, some of them are very hard to, to reach. And, and we just keep, we keep trying, we keep doing exactly um, what, you know, in Matthew 28, you know, to go there for and, and share the gospel, you know, teaching them all that I've commanded you. And that's what we do every day. We, you know, like it was great that, you know, Ephesians 6, awesome that, you know, you got to put on that armor. Put on that armor as you're, um, as we go and, and looking to the cross. And, you know, I had, Rob told me, he said, you know, he said, if I wouldn't have came to jail, he said, I don't know what would have happened with my life. So, um, it's been a great, it's been a great blessing. Um, it's my life, you know, I, I, I didn't go through what Dan went through. You know, I don't know if anybody knows Dan's story, but he served two and a half years in jail. But what I relate to the guys is I spent time, you know, in the military I know the life that they've gone through because 90% of the guys that come to us, they're either drug or alcohol related. And so they, I was going to church on Sunday and I was partying with the guys on Saturday, Friday and Saturday. I said, I was living that double life. I said, I know where you're coming from. And, uh, and sharing in the gospel. And one of my favorite verses is John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And 
that's a, a mainstay that we, you know, try to teach to these guys. And um, it's nice to hear from churches and, and, and when guys get out that they go, that we try to set them up with churches to go um, uh, with pastors and, and with teachers and, and, you know, just to hear what these guys are doing uh, in their life and, and being able to, uh, um, that they're on fire for the Lord. So um, it's been, it's been a, a great experience. I still believe that God had called me to this ministry. Um, and does anybody have any questions? Um, but I want to first, I want to thank Jerry. I want to thank all of, all of you for, you know, uh, for your prayers, uh, support. Um, I will have some of the uh, newsletters uh, in the back. Um, I will be here after. Uh, afterwards, if you would like to talk more about the ministry, um, that would be great. Uh, but we all come, we have to come vulnerable to, to you know, when we come, become vulnerable, that's when the Lord, he does changes in the heart. And we know for this world, we can see, I mean, if you watch the news or whatever, it's, it's a heart issue. It's not any other problem, it's, but it's a heart issue. And... Um, so again, I would like to, th yes. Um, out of the guys you have access to, what percentage attend the Bible studies when you're able to have those? When we were having the Bible studies, the tr we, they're separated between trial and sentence. So the trial guys, I was getting close to anywhere between 10 and 20 guys in the chapel. Now the, the sentence guys, they averaged anywhere between three and five only because the times that we were having chapel they were um, a lot of the guys they're working during that time um, but we do hold we hold chapel when we were holding chapel we hold chapel in the morning and in the afternoons and some of the guys that work in whatever uh, they tell me well i can't get i can't get up that early and i'm like you gotta make, you gotta make time but um but yeah we also uh thinking too is that um, we not only have um, state inmates but we got federal inmates and we've got um, county inmates so some people are there just for a little time and leave others are there for two years um, or, or more um, but I always tell the guys they tell the guys that know that they're gonna be serving somewhere else and they're gonna be a long time and I tell them no matter where you're at, no matter, God will place the people in front of you who he wants um, to you to minister to. And a lot of them feel like, you know, they, they can't minister. I'm like, you can minister. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a, you know, a chaplain. You can still minister to the guys. And the nice thing is with the COVID going on, there are studies going on in the, jail, in the jails that guys are holding and even studies that are being held with uh, the officers. So uh, God is working in the Plymouth County Jail, and it, it's, it, it makes me happy that, you know, when Guy can go out and he can go back into a community and he is, you know, and God has changed his, changed his life, just like he did with mine. And so I thank you. Yes. Leon, how many uh, inmates are at the prison? Right now, there are a little over uh, 500. Um, we do, um, we had at one time, we had over 1,200. Um, when I started, there was about 800. Um, so with COVID and we have some immigration that are there, so they've, they've gotten, you know, the courts and stuff have, have worked and we've gotten, um, but um, we minister to who's, Who's there, and uh, even with the uh, the administrative people that we have there, uh, and uh, it's been it's a blessing. It's just a great blessing to uh, to know that these guys and, and and sharing the word with them. So I I thank you, Jerry. Uh, so, folks, uh, well, first of all, Leon, I appreciate what you do. Uh, I have been to Dartmouth House of Correction years ago. I, was, I went into uh, the Plymouth Correctional Facility. I've been to Ash Street Prison, which is uh, 
uh, quite the ordeal. And uh, each time uh, you're dealing with people uh, that are totally ruined lives and broken. And uh, that's why God's died. Amen. Uh, broke, ruined lives and broken hearts. And, uh, uh, but uh, God definitely prepares you for work. Um, and it's a special work. Uh, everything that you do for God is a special work. And whatever, whatever your work is for the Lord, it's a special work. As Leon said to a, a cellmate or a, prison, um, a prisoner, you don't have to go and preach. So, you know, you don't have to be a, a preacher. Remember I said the other week, you have a pulpit. God has given you a pulpit. And, and wherever you go, you take that pulpit. Um, you know, it's interesting. I, I went down to uh, Delaware this past week for, for uh, four days to visit. Uh, a couple of us, several of us went down. And so this guy, Ed Miller, we're going to try to get Ed to come to the church and share. Uh, but this guy, Ed, was talking about how he was invited to go to Northern Ireland and to minister to guys who were in, uh, called, uh, they were in the prison, prison called the Black Maze. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. But it was all of these terrorists, um, IRA members that were in there for life. I mean, absolute uh, hands-down killers. And um, so Ed would tell us the story where uh, he was driven in by a bus and all the windows were blackened and they would zigzag. It was called the maze. So you couldn't find your way out. If any, You wouldn't know the way in. You wouldn't know the way out. You didn't know where it was. And so he got in there and he said he found some tremendous brothers in Christ, guys that were living Christ. And he said when he was leaving the prison, he felt as he came out that he was actually going into prison because he felt that there were so, those prisoners knew Christ in a way that many people in our churches and, it, you know, in society, they talk about Christ and being a Christian. Uh, and yet, they're so far from it. And uh, it struck me that Ed felt that he was leaving, uh, as he was leaving prison, that he was actually going into prison. Interesting perspective. Yeah. Very quickly, folks, um, this is my day off. But I want to share some things with you. All right? Take a look at Isaiah chapter uh, 61. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Uh, this chapter here, is a, 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 the context is about Zion's Redeemer. Chapters 60 through 62 are about Zion's Redeemer. And you know that the Lord Jesus quoted a portion of Isaiah's prophecy in Luke chapter 4. And uh, what he did was he quoted this prophecy... And then he, remember, he went into the synagogue, he stood up, he read from the scroll. And then he said, this has been fulfilled in your hearing. And he sat down. And people were amazed, although just for a short time. I want you to take a look at this passage of scripture, folks. This, Christ is called and sent to do the very thing that Isaiah talks about. Uh, this is, uh, chapter 61 of Isaiah, verses 1 through 3, is Christ's ministry to our hearts. You know, you say, well, Pastor, I'm not in prison. Uh, no, we're, we've been imprisoned. We've been imprisoned by sin. And guess what? Sometimes we go back into prison uh, in our sin and in our thoughts and in our mindset. And so I want to very quickly break down for you how this ministry of Christ, which started over 2,000 years ago, is ongoing to our hearts. This is what he's been called to do. First of all, last week I talked to you about how you have an anointing from the Holy One. God has sent his spirit upon you. You have an anointing. You know truth when you hear it, right? You know truth because you know Christ. My sheep hear my voice. You know it. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Christ was given an anointing, and he's given that anointing to us. And again, you don't have to have a pulpit. Uh, secondly, take a look uh, to bring good news. Uh, Leon talked about how, <laughs> you know, 
Look at the world. Everything's bad news, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's bad. It's very, very bad. And I know I've talked about fake news <laughs> and, you know, politics. But Christ comes and gives us good news to the afflicted, to those who have been humbled, uh, burdened by sin, uh, bowed down, uh, is, is the sense here. Uh, to bind up the brokenhearted. You know, you, you go uh, each, each Valentine's Day, you know, we give out hearts to people and we give out candies and we give big boxes of candied hearts and all that stuff. I want you to think about this. Broken hearts. Uh, my heart's been broken. Your heart's been broken. Uh, dreams have been shattered. And, and you know, at a certain point, uh, you need somebody to come in and bind up that broken heart. And that's what the Lord Jesus does. Every, when I, after I've become a Christian, I've still experienced a broken heart. And you have too. And Christ comes along and he just binds it up again. That's what he does. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Oh my goodness. Uh, I am so, so dim-witted in my thinking. I don't know about you. But when I try to comprehend and lay hold of what Christ has done, sometimes I'm thinking I'm living a captive life I get, when I try to process it. But he's proclaimed liberty to the captives. It, you don't have to be physically in prison to, to, to realize that this message is for you. Freedom to the prisoners. Uh, literally, you know, you, you've seen movies or maybe even... Um, Real life situations where people are brought in in shackles. This sense here uh, of the idea uh, of freedom uh, to the prisoners or the whole, it's to basically become unshackled, to loosen the bands and find a way out. That's the redemptive work of the Lord Jesus Christ. The favorable year of the Lord. Uh, what does Paul say in 2 Corinthians? Now is the day of salvation. It's a favorable year. You know, it's not a literal year. Uh, it's not only seven years. It's not simply the year of Jupiter. It's from now until, the, until our God comes back. That's a favorable year. It's a time frame. Uh, and and part, of the, part of the good news is, is also that, that God's going to address every wrong. He's, he's going to right every wrong. I said to myself the other day, I can't wait. And yet, Harold and I have talked about this. You know, um, you want to see a lot more people come into that favorable year before God comes, amen? Comfort and mourning. I, you know, um, Judy just lost her husband, uh, Judy Kossaboom. Uh, many of you folks have lost your spouse. Uh, you know, God brings comfort in, in, in times of mourning, you know, the broken heart. He knows all the needs. He knows how to wrap it all up, bind it all up. Here you go. Oh, this is just absolutely amazing. Um, giving them a garland instead of ashes. You know, you go to Hawaii, they throw a garland around your neck or this beautiful bouquet of flowers in some places. Contrast that. Beautiful flowers as opposed to ashes. A beautiful life as opposed to a ruined life. That's what Isaiah is saying. And this is nothing, this is none other than Christ's ministry to each and every one of us as we walk with him. Oil of gladness. Uh, you know, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Uh, where, where, where would you be in your life if you didn't have the Holy Spirit, the oil of gladness upon your life and your heart? I, I told this story years ago, I worked at the gas station, and there was this farmer who came in every day, and he looked beaten down and withered, and the guy never smiled. I, you know, I always thought that that would be me if I never found the Lord Jesus in my heart. A mantle of praise, verse 3, a mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. Praise God that we're able to praise him because of what Christ has done. And then here you go, finally, uh, that they might be called oaks of righteousness. Everything that God is doing in your life is to make you and I like an oak of righteousness 
strong, upright in him, and deeply planted in the soils of righteousness in, in his life. And why is that? That he might be glorified. It's not about me. It's not about Leon. It's not about you. It's about what Christ has done. Uh, and, you know, we look at this and we say, oh, well, you know, that's a ministry for, you know, uh, somebody who doesn't know the Lord. No, it's, it's a ministry for somebody that doesn't know the Lord. And it's also a ministry for those of us who know God. Because, you know, we're being transformed from glory to glory and taken out of one captive cell, <laughs> you know, and given freedom. And then we go back in again and we're... And, and we're taken out. And God does this constantly for each and every one of us. And so, uh, you know, when you think of prison ministry, uh, you know, think of Leon and Dan. But don't limit it to that. Because uh, this, is, this is all, the, it, whether it's physical or spiritual, God has come to set each and every one of us free uh, and, and give us so much freedom in him. Uh, uh, and, and, and that's, I think, how we should understand this verse today, or these verses today. Uh, whether it be from the prison, or from the church, the church to the prison, or anything there in between, uh, he has come to set us free. And um, that's a beautiful, beautiful picture of the, uh, the beginning work of Christ in our life and our heart, and the finished work of Christ in our life and our heart. Let's pray. Let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for Leon sharing today. Thank you for his testimony. Uh, thank you for the way in which you've called him. Thank you for the way in which Dan has uh, mentored him. Uh, Lord, thank you for the way in which you have mentored him and uh, the, uh, the successes uh, and the ministry. And we know, Lord, that uh, they're just vessels and how they go and how they are used by you. And we bless you for that. And uh, thank you uh, so much uh, for what you've done in our life and our heart uh, here uh, for the prisoners that have been reached. And thank you uh, that our times are in your hands in every which way, whether it's been um, the times uh, for our days on earth or whether it's for the people we meet or what we do uh, this afternoon tonight or tomorrow morning our times are in your hands and we bless you for that and we give you the praise and we pray in jesus name amen